Hi, everybody. DJ Yokely with you mm. with another Coach's Corner brought to you by NDC Heating and Cooling. It's the Crestview Coach's Corner joined by Coach Cusick. Coach Q, uh, so far, so good for the Crestview Rebels. Only one blemish on the record. Came week one in a tsunami uh, that you guys basically needed life jackets to play in. Talk to me about naturally the season that it has been and, and kind of the, the role that your boys have played uh, going into the 2020 year. Well, I think more than anything, that first week, um, you know, there was a lot of things that went against us. We had the the rain, that, and, you know, everything that that champion did, they did well and 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 did it well enough to beat us. You know, we had no power. We, you know, it was just it was a weird, weird situation. But you know, that's no excuse. You you got to go play the game, and they did what they needed to do. And I think it was a wake up call for our guys that they realized, hey, we can't rest on our laurels. We got to work hard. And that's what they've been doing. And I, I feel each and every week we've gotten better. Seemed like a light bulb went off at going from week one to two. And obviously when you roll out the the carpet, so to speak, onto that new turf field, uh, it, it seemed like the boys took everything personal. It looks like they're playing mad. It looks like they're playing with purpose. And for from a coach's perspective, that's got to be what you know and love. Well, it is. I mean, I think they, they're taking it very personal and they realize – you know, they got a chance to do some special things and, uh, you know, that's what, that's the way they're preparing. And I think it shows on, on game night. How has this How has year this been year? challenging to you? Uh, what, what, I guess, what has the biggest challenge been to you in a year that, you know, you provide masks and social distancing and, and swapping kids in and out, uh, to make sure they're not around each other too much. What has been the biggest challenge to Paul Cusick? Well, I think, uh, you know, more than anything, you just want your student athletes to have some normalcy. And I think it's their their chance when they're at practice or in a game situation that they, there's that feeling of sore, of being normal, you know. But there's always a reminder of something with the COVID restrictions and all that. Um, so just making sure that they're having fun in a situation where it can be taxing and can be draining, you know, because they have to follow this rule and that rule. And you know, high school kids don't want to follow every single rule that there ever is, um, and that's just the nature of the beast. But you know, just, and I'm sure that's everywhere, you know, no matter what school you look at, you want your guys to, to have fun and, and compete and enjoy. And I, and I was always worried that this situation would kind of suck that out of it, you know, kind of being an emotional vampire, so to speak. So when you look at this year, and obviously different from a couple of different reasons, but when you look at the conference you're in, there's been new opponents seemingly every week. Uh, you've had a couple of familiar faces, but not many. Has that helped you in, in, in kind of lining up your team, basically playing your game as opposed to worrying about what the other sideline's doing? Well, I think that's that that has helped. I mean, I think the one thing that we really focused on is we kept just saying, just go 1-0, and oh, let's worry about ourselves and do what we need to do. And, um, you know, that's 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 been the focus throughout the season, and um, hopefully we can just make it work one more week. So when you get that six spot, when you're voted into that six spot from all the other coaches, uh, obviously it comes with a little bit of a little bit of uh, notoriety. You get a home game, uh, and then you move to the road where you're the underdog, which is weird because this is a team that has proved people <coughs> wrong all year long. Do you embrace the underdog rule? Does this team embrace the underdog rule? Well, we talk about it. You know, I think we can't rest our laurels on it, but we got to realize that. Um, you know, there is a thing, you know, sometimes I think we get overlooked because we're down here in Columbiana County. Um, unfortunately, that's just a reality of it. It's been a reality, you know, for the 20 some years that I've been here. You know, we try to get out and go play teams in the other areas. Uh, but, you know, you just sometimes don't get that recognition, no matter not, whether it's Crestview or whoever else in, in our county. I, I personally feel that our county gets overlooked. I, I agree with you. When you look at uh, the Garfield game, there's a lot of teams that Garfield really uh, gave them all they had this year and, and came out on the other side with a victory. You guys were a, a seesaw battle uh, last Saturday night. What did it take to beat Garfield? And, and, and what do you think that – is that the signature win for the year or, or do you got a little bit more in the tank? Well, I think more than anything, it was discipline and our kids, you know, executing the game plan. Opening drive, they came out, they just steamrolled us right down the, the field. And, you know, I thought, oh, man, here go, here we go. Are we going to have a long night? We we fumbled on the next possession, you know. But then our kids settled down and responded to the adversity. And I think uh, just executing the game plan and, and then sticking with it and believing in it, that was that was huge. It, 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 it was a good win. Um, 
I don't know if it was a signature win or not, but it was a good one. And, uh, you know, we want to keep it rolling. What's incredible is it seemingly every week there's someone different that steps up for the black and gold. William Hardenbrook, you look at Brandon Janssen's, you look at your son, you look at, I mean, anybody on this roster at any given time can step up. That makes you increasingly dangerous as you head further and further into the playoffs. What is it like for a coach to look at the weapons on, on your sheet and say, hey, we, we've got a, a few options here to, to get what we need? Well, it is nice. We want to spread the ball around, you know, and sometimes within the game plan that changes where, okay, we're running the ball really well. So maybe, you know, Ethan and, and William get all the touches, but you know, our goal is to spread the ball around and make sure that we get touches for everybody. We even keep a touch chart, um, but it always doesn't work that way, but our kids are very unselfish and they just want to win. So now you look at uh, this Saturday, South Range, a team you're very familiar with, a coach you're very familiar with, and Dan Yeagley across the sidelines from you. This is, quote, an end of, the, of an era uh, as, as we're looking at it. The boys have talked about it. This is a game that you guys have been two ships ready for on a crash course since 2020 started, and destiny brings you together here in Week 10. Is this an exciting week at Crestview and, and knowing that you're playing the guys from just down 46? Yeah, it is. I mean, our kids respect that uh, this rivalry. They they uh, get excited about it. Um, you know, they were disappointed at the beginning of the season when the schedule got all changed up and everything. Um, so it's a great opportunity. And I think both communities enjoy the the rivalry. And um, you know, I've never had anything but respect for Coach Yagley and his program. And uh, you know, I think our kids respect their program. And it's going to be highly competitive. And you know, we want to go out and compete. They want to go out and compete. And both teams are going to play hard to the end. Keys to victory to beating the Raiders in their house on Halloween. Well, I think more than anything, it, it just comes down to making some plays and not allowing them to make big plays. And um, got to stick to the game plan. It's pretty simple. You know, when you look at big games, there's no big secrets. It's just do the little things well. And hopefully that that's enough to win. Coach, as we always do, we're going to step off the field for a moment with our, our last question, being that it will be Halloween when you step onto that field in Raider Stadium. What is the best and worst Halloween costume you've ever had? Oh, best and worst. That's a good question. Uh, you know, uh, oh man, I'd have to say that the uh, best Halloween costume, um, I think uh, I can remember – I can't, I can't remember exactly what I was, but I remember I actually lived in New Waterford when I was little. So I was like five years old Okay. It was before we moved out of there and we were trick or treating. My mom was a rookie mom with trick or treating and it was raining out. I, and she uh, gave me a brown paper bag to collect my candy in and the bottom fell out. My candy went everywhere. So I think maybe that was my worst. I don't know if it was my worst costume, but it was my worst trick-or-treating experience. Um, but I've had a lot of good ones. So I can remember a few years ago, you know, in town in Columbiana when I took my kids trick-or-treating. And on Elm Street, uh, I used to live on Elm Street in Columbiana. And across the, that from where I used to live, this guy goes all out and decorates and actually has moving characters and people playing zombies and stuff like that. And my kids were completely freaked out. And I thought it was awesome. So, I mean, that was probably my best. All right. And, and the final question, because it's spooky, do you believe in ghosts? And are you scared of them? I do believe in ghosts. <laughs> I, I do believe in ghosts. And uh, yes and no. I, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. But Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, we'll have to get the Ghostbusters out there in Columbiana. Get uh, Peter Vinkman and the boys. Coach, as always, thank you so much for your time. It's very much valued. And, and good luck on Saturday. And we look forward to talking to you again. All right. Much appreciated. See you guys.